Good morning everyone. Hi, hello, my name is EJ and I am back again with another narrated or time-lapse video for us to take a look at, uh, watch, maybe learn a thing or two from uh, when I talk about this particular piece. So yeah, um, this is what I do. This is my jam. I basically make commentaries on all my art time-lapses uh, in the hopes that maybe someone out there can learn a thing or two from it. So. Uh, today we're taking a look at a prompt or a particular illustration I did based on a prompt from Raman's Sketch Zone. Uh, so real quick, Raman's Sketch Zone. I've been calling it Raman's Sketch Zone because there's actually other groups out there called Sketch Zone as well. Um, Raman's Sketch Zone is a particular Discord group that I'm part of uh, in Discord, obviously. Um, and uh yeah <laughs> we're an art group basically we help each other out with all our our pieces and whatnot uh help each other try to get better and whatnot so yeah we give each other critiques and every now and then we obviously do prompts as well we do our little mini competitions and whatnot so this particular one um the prompt for this particular illustration was called sworn enemies and it's uh i do believe it was a weekly sketch topic because we do monthlies and we do weeklies and if i'm not wrong it, this is a weekly sketch topic um so yeah uh the topic for that particular week in february of last year was sworn enemies um so yeah um that's where the idea came from obviously um that's where the prompt was or that uh that was the prompt sworn enemies and that was basically the inspiration um how map crunch came into picture i don't remember uh real quick we're basically taking a look at a photo that i got from map crunch um and obviously i'm using it as a basis for my illustration so um yeah but before i proceed further into that um i guess i could talk real quick about what map crunch is uh, map crunch is basically a really great website tool um for artists to use to do plain air studies there's actually groups out there that does plain air studies based on map crunch um obviously it's not like real plain air because you're not outside they call it virtual plain air groups um but yeah we do there's a lot of people that do studies based on map crunch and whatnot so um yeah it's a great resource a great tool if you're an artist uh do check it out all the photos are basically from google maps uh the only the cool thing about map crunch is basically it kind of just it's kind of like a randomizer basically uh in google maps you kind of need to like put in your information where you need to go and whatnot to like find things map crunch kind of does have this whole uh thing where you like put in a few parameters of what you're looking for and it will just pull up images based on the parameters you set so it's really cool uh so if you're basically looking for an inspiration for like a scene setting um then yeah you could go up to map crunch and just put in uh plug in a few parameters and it will pull up images based on those parameters it's really cool like that so yeah, but it's basically based off the Google Map technology and whatnot. Uh, so uh, as for Map Crunch, <laughs> Map Crunch came into the picture when I'm doing this particular speed paint slash uh, prompt for schedule. I don't remember <laughs> what inspired me to go to Map Crunch. Um, I could have just done a few sketches just based off of the prompt. But for some odd reason, I ended up in Map Crunch. And if I'm not wrong, this was a while back, obviously. This was a year ago. So I'm obviously trying to have to remember um, my train of thought. If I'm not wrong, my train of thought was that I was looking for a particular place where a fight could happen, right? And if I'm not wrong, all the places that I've looked up so far were exterior scenes. Up until I somehow ended up in that interior scene that we just took a look at that it was a screenshot of an interior scene if i'm not wrong it was a library of some sort it could have been in spain but i'm not sure i don't remember where that particular location was um i could rewind it because I, I think if i'm not wrong in the photo itself it would actually say the location of what the photo is um 
or where the photo was taken from but i don't want to have to rewind to take a look at it so anyways um for some odd reason I, I was looking for all these exterior scenes where i could set like a fight a fight scene to occur right and i ended up in this library of some sort and i, I didn't know what it was with the stairs but i thought the stairs was kind of cool like it was just a cool thing to have in the illustration and i immediately pictured someone on top of the stairs ready to face off with someone at the bottom which is obviously what i'm sketching in my scene right now and which is obviously what my illustration is there's this girl uh in the foreground who's about ready to fight this guy in shadow that's on top right so I saw that when I saw the stairs and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to base off my illustration off of this particular photo, right? So I went ahead and took a screenshot of it and whatnot. And when I first put it in Krita, I don't know if there was like a time delay from the time I put it in Krita and started drawing uh, versus like the time that I found it or I found the photo. Like, I don't know if I... I don't know if the timeline was like I found a photo and then I started drawing or if there was a space in between. I, I'm not quite sure, but it's kind of unique what happened when I started sketching because originally when I saw the photo and I saw the interior scene, I really wanted to set the scene inside. You know, I wanted it to be an interior scene. Um, I, I wanted this whole grand palace looking type scene basically was what i kind of had in my mind but when i started sketching it in krita which obviously i just got done sketching it in krita i somehow saw an opportunity to do this whole fire scene and have the bad guy which is on top of the stairs right he's the guy in the background um I, I kind of saw the image of him being in shadow because he was backlit by a fire that was happening in the background. And when I kind of saw it in my head, I was like, huh, maybe I should set this whole scene back in an exterior setting, you know, and have like some form of building on fire, which is basically what I drew, right? There's this mansion on fire. Uh, so obviously there's this whole thing that just happened before this fight. Maybe um, the girl burned the building down. It's like the guy's base or something. I, I, I'm not sure what the story is. I, I love narratives in my illustration. I always go off on narratives. And it's always kind of fun to juxtapose like what exactly this scenario is, right? But the funny thing is like when I'm actually doing it, I'm just, I don't really have that much of a story. Like I kind of have a story in my head, but in the same time, I try to keep it simple and just try to like look at the illustration and I thought that what I have was a very, very cool um, illustration to have, you know. You could tell there's about to be a face-off of some sort. There's a girl in the front. She's drawing her sword out. Her sword is like glowing, right? So it's like super enigmatic, magical sword of some sort. And she's ready to face off with the guy who's in shadow, who's on top, who basically kind of looks like a bad guy. And in all honesty, it could have been reversed, you know? Like the guy on top of the stairs could be the good guy and the girl in the foreground could be the bad guy, right? I mean, it's not really set in stone like that. But just the way that I drew it kind of just basically delineates that for, for the most part, right? So... But anyways, whatever the story is, whatever narrative you could come up with just by looking at the photo, hey, go at it. Because when I was drawing this, I didn't really have a set narrative in my head, which kind of is a great thing to talk about um, in particular, especially for me, right? For me, when I do my illustrations, I I obviously love narratives and illustrations. I love little illus I love illustrations that tells a story, you know? Slice of life illustrations are also great as well, but illustrations that kind of denote some form of story is always so interesting to me, right? Um, and so I always try to portray that in a lot of my art and whatnot, um, such as the cases in this one, right? There's like a story going on. But whenever I'm actually doing the artwork, I don't really have a set, set story like I 
kind of have a set story, but it's not really fully fleshed out. Like, I really don't know what they're fighting about, you know, and I don't know why the mansion is burning in the background. But one thing I do know is that it's a cool looking scene and I know there's about to be a really awesome face off fight about to happen. So, you know, when I'm doing this illustration, I just pretty much just keep it simple as that for the most part, you know, so, so as much as psychologists would like to psychoanalyze artworks and go off into, oh, the artist was feeling this way or you know, the artist wants to, you know, kind of say that this piece is about blah, blah, blah. Half the time, I can guarantee, I, I can tell you this much, half the time, the artist just wants to make a cool image. You know, so as much as psychoanalyze or psycho psychologists would like to psychoanalyze art pieces, for the most part, it's not really as deep as that. Half the time, an artist just wants to make a cool looking picture. And in my case, in this particular one, I just wanted to make a cool looking picture that depicts the prompt, which is sworn enemies. And so, yeah. Uh, so, anyways, thanks for listening for that little tidbit because I think this is really important because I've had psychologist friends go off and trying to analyze me based on the artwork I'm creating and half the time in my head when they're doing that I'm kind of just like laughing in my head and just sitting there thinking you know I just really just wanted to come up with a cool photo that's it as simple as that so yeah but anyways let's talk about the process because I do love talking about the process even the process is pretty much the same as <laughs> the same in almost all my speed paints the process is I do a quick sketch and then after that, I typically do a line, a cleaner line sketch. I skipped the clean line sketch in this one. I went from straight up rough sketch to just coloring things in. So I was very rough with this particular piece. Um, when I color my piece in, it, it goes by really quickly. In less than five minutes, I would have the whole piece laid out in some form of color. I basically use the random mech brush to like create a bunch of shapes and different hues and colors. Um, all in the same, like, uh, let me uh, backtrack. When I lay down my colors, it's, there's a huge variation on my brush. So if I pick like a color red, for example, it's not just straight up that particular red, it's hues of those red that gets laid down. So there's a slight variation in the hues when I'm putting this down and I'm doing this real quick. And the reason why is because eventually I know that I'm going to merge my line sketch and all my dirty, dirty coloring. I guess I could start calling in that my dirty coloring layer. I know that I'm going to smudge all of those into recognizable shapes, which is what we're taking a look at right now, right? I colored everything really loose, really crazy, and then merge them all in one layer and then and then basically smudge them all into like shapes that I could tell. Like take for example the girl in the foreground, like we could tell that she's still there even though she's kind of like blurry basically. Now eventually I, I know that I was going to do this to come up with a base paint to do all my detailing on. So when I do my coloring phrase, I don't pay as much attention to the colors I'm putting as much as I'm paying attention to the values of the colors that I'm putting in. Because really, the values is so much more important than what colors that you're putting in. Now, there are a lot of color theories, obviously. Color is very important in the piece, right? There's a reason why there's tons of color theories out there. Um, but when it comes to like color and value, it's always better to pay attention to values better. Because especially since, you know, when you're doing digital painting, you could always just adjust the colors later. So um, anyways, so yeah, uh, that's what I did. Basically, I merged them all in one layer, smudged them all into recognizable shapes. And then after I'm done uh, smudging everything in recognizable shapes, I started doing my um, detailing, which my detailing is basically a three-step process. It's basically I delineate my edges which means I make my edges sharper. I um, accentuate my shadows, which means I make my shadows darker if they need 
you know, to darken up a little bit more. And then I add highlights. And so I basically repeat this three step process throughout areas of the painting. I've already begun that actually. Uh, you could tell that I started with the background, uh, working on the trees and the mansion on fire. And then as soon as I'm done with those, I would move on to like a different part of the illustration, which in this case, I'm working on the stairs right now. Um, and then eventually I start working on the hero character. So anyways, we'll just watch the show for now. I uh, see how this detailing process goes and I'll come back again a little later to talk some more about this piece and uh, about my thoughts about this particular illustration.
So my detailing of this particular artwork is almost done. Uh, you could see me pretty much uh, work the female character in the foreground. Uh, I obviously did another line sketch just to kind of help me figure out where things are. And then after that, I painted over those lines to basically come up with my character. So yeah, and then I'm slowly detailing her by adding some more uh details and whatnot so yeah such a fun thing to see the speed paint my style of speed paint is so different now too versus with this one with this one it was really really loose um, i was so much looser back in the day uh so yeah um let's talk about my own personal critique about this piece since i love doing this towards the end of the video so my particular critique of this piece is that um Composition wise is very interesting. It's very strong. I really really love it. I really love the idea of the bad guy being in shadow because he's backlit by the fire that's going on in the background. That's obviously very very dramatic. Um, I, I really absolutely love that. I, I love the girl's pose um, just because she looks very angry <laughs> i guess this is my only way of putting it she real looks like she's about to get down to business for sure i mean she she looks like she's ready to yeah to get out and whatnot so she's ready to fight yo so um so those aspects of the illustration i do do love i, I absolutely love that those aspects and the illustrations uh the colors are very very interesting uh i have been struggling with colors and i still am uh, even though i come up with really great formulas over the past few years that kind of helps me with my color issues um one of the things i do now is i always try to start out with a limited palette that always helps me set the whole overall tone of like the painting which is in this particular case is very pink it's very red it's very heat it's just very purplish red and I love it because of all those purples and all those reds that are going on and yellows too uh, that's going on in the illustration they make such a great juxtaposition against the cyan of the sword you know this light cyan is coming off of the sword um, it's a very nice contrast so how that played out worked out very well in my favor um, the saturation level though are just obnoxious on this particular piece i will admit that uh i didn't have a good saturation recipe uh, when i did this i i didn't even actually come up with a great saturation recipe until this year uh 2022 um so yeah uh, i've been practicing my newfound knowledge about saturation and applying it in a lot of my speed paints now um, but before when I was when I created this piece I didn't really have like a great idea of when to saturate colors and when to desaturate them I've always just kind of just gone off on well hey I always love saturation my pieces are almost always going to be saturated in some form or manner uh, I don't really do pastel colors very well and I don't do them period actually I, I hardly have any pieces out there that are very pastel like in nature I do have some they they do exist but they're very far and few between and I'm not sure if I posted those on my social media the majority of the artwork I posted are definitely definitely saturated it's just my thing I love saturation in my pieces uh, but there is such a thing as super saturated which is the case in this particular one so if I was to critique this particular piece I kind of think that it got a little too saturated and part of the reason why was because the limited palette that I used for this particular one which came from color palette cinema um, the palette that I used was very saturated to begin with so since I was starting with super saturated saturation super saturated saturated super saturated color set it, I ended up with a piece that's a little bit more saturated than I would have preferred and I really love that detail on that sword that little circle thing at the bottom of it I don't know how I came up with that I, I don't know if I was looking at a reference I have a feeling that I was looking at a reference I could be wrong because I cannot picture it in my head what reference it was if I was using a reference but I absolutely love that detail I just absolutely love it I thought it came out really cool so yeah and I'm doing this whole color dodge thing 
to kind of add a little pop to the illustration, which there it is. Uh, but yeah, going back to the saturation, I, I think it's just a little too saturated for my liking. Uh, the trees especially, I think, is a little too saturated. Like, if I desaturate the trees, I think that would put everything in balance because then everything else is slightly desaturated while the fire is super saturated. So I think that might have created a great balance compared to the way it is now, but... It is what it is so anyways here's the end of the illustration the end of the illustration thank you guys for watching it with me i hope you guys learned a thing or two from it like and subscribe like and subscribe good night